everybody, my name is Leo and with this video we will share a demo review of the Apollo Twin X, also testing a lot of virtual amp plugins that you can use with the Universal Audio hardware like the Friedman BE100, the Friedman Dirty Shilly 40, which by the way I really love, and the Marshall Plexi. I will also share with you how I mix the tracks of the demo song at the beginning of the video and what are the plugins I've used. So, a lot of stuff for this video, let's start with the Apollo Twinix description. Let me summarize the Universal Audio lineup of audio interfaces and the main differences between them, so you are gonna have a more precise idea of the Twinix capabilities. First of all, we have the Arrow which is the entry-level interface with Thunderbolt 3 connection, two Unison mic line preamps, two monitor outputs, front panel IZ instrument input and stereo headphone output, and only one UAD solo core processor. Please notice that it can also be powered via Thunderbolt 3, while the TwinX cannot. Then we have the Apollo TwinX, this one, which is basically very similar to the Mark II. The main differences are, it has Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, whereas the Mark II has Thunderbolt 2 connectivity. It has new converters in line with the Apollo X6, 8 and AP rack interfaces. It can be configured with duo or quad processor, but not solo like the Mark II or the Arrow. It cannot be powered via Thunderbolt 3 like the Arrow, as I was saying, unfortunately, I would say. On the other hand, comparing the Twin X to the rack mount version of the Apollo interfaces, we have basically four main differences. The Apollo X has the same upgraded AD and DA conversion of the Apollo X8 and X6 rack units, while the Apollo X16 has better converters. Another difference is that the X6, X8 and X16 have a dual crystal clock, meaning that multiple of 44.1 kHz are clocked with one crystal, and multiples of 48 kHz are controlled by another one, whereas the two new desktop interfaces have a single clock for all sample rates. Therefore, jitter should be managed a little bit better by the rack interfaces. Obviously, another difference is that the rack mount interfaces have more I.O. Lastly, the rack mount interfaces have six Shark DSP chips, while the twin can have two or four. Then we have the Apollo X4, which is basically a TwinX with more I.O., like four mic preamps, two headphones out, two IZ inputs, and is available only with four Shark DSP chips. Then we have the rack mount interfaces like the Apollo X6. So basically, this is the whole family of Apollo X interfaces with their most important characteristic, in my opinion, and the prices. The TwinX goes from $900 or Euro to $1400. The X4 price is $1800 and it comes only with the 4 Shark DSP. Then we have the entry level of the rack mount interfaces, which is the X6, which price is $2200. Then we have the Apollo X8 with $2700, the Apollo X8P with $33, and lastly, the X16 with $3,500 or Euro. Another point that I would like to mention is that you can still use the Twin X and the X4 as controllers for your rack mount Apollo interface, meaning that the dashboard interface can control your main and secondary monitor volume, dim, mute, and talkback function, and that's exactly what I'm doing with my system. Now, let's check out the amps I've used in the demo song and the plugin I've used for mixing, then I will give you my two cents and as usually at the end of the video you are going to have the unboxing experience. Now let's talk about the demo song of the beginning of the video and the plugin I've used for simulating the amps. I've used, uh, as we already say, three plugins, the Marshall Plexi, a Friedman DS40 and a Friedman B100. And I've used an amp plugin also for the bass guitar. Let's check them out, starting from the amps used for the sound just at the beginning of the video. This sound. Well, here I've used two guitar tracks recorded in different moments and panel right and left. 
in order to obtain a wider stereo image. For the track on the left, I've used a Friedman Dirty Shirley 40 with the 1x12 cab marked with the Neumann CMV563, which is a large diaphragm valve mic. This one. I've never used such a microphone before and I have to say that I really like it. I set the controls of the EQ, volume and gain around noon, just pushing a little bit of high and a little bit of the master volume. Here, the treble, here is the master volume, while decreasing a bit the gain. For the track on the right, I've used a Marshall Plexi, a simulation done by Softube with the valve microphone set. I've used an EQ that is a little bit complementary to the one of the Dirty Shield. Let's see it. As you can notice, here I've pushed the treble in the Dirty Shirley, and here I have decreased a little bit the treble. On the other hand, on the Marshall, I've pushed a little bit the present, the bass and the middle, where here they are all at noon. I've used for the Marshall the jumpered input with the volume a little bit more than nine, so not too high. I have to say that I really like the sound that I have obtained, my opinion is pretty nice and it is pretty full, wide and pretty realistic, I have to say. Now let's see the equalization, I have mixed the two tracks in one group track, I use a fab filter equalization, rolling off the frequency below 115 just to leave space to the bass and to the kick drum and decreasing a little bit around 4500. Why? Because on the other hand I pushed a little bit the equalization of the lead guitar at the same frequency. Let's see it. This is the equalization of the lead guitar because I think that this is a good way to have two tracks of the same instrument that are not conflicting in the mix. Where I decrease the comping guitars I increase the lead guitar just to have the lead guitar that jump out a little bit more in the mix. And I've also used a little bit of Ocean Way reverb for the comping guitar, just to give them a little bit of space. And now the solo guitar that has this sound. Here I've used more stuff. First of all, the amp is a Friedman BE100 with these settings. So basically I've used the same cab using the Dirty Shirley with the same microphone. This is a Friedman 1x12 mixed with the Neumann CMV563. The amp has obviously different setting in comparison with the setting used for the comping sound because I have increased the gain and the master volume, I have increased also the treble and the presence while the bass and the middle are both at noon. In front of the amp I've used also a Tube Screamer plugin with the volume maximized with not too much gain and with just a little bit more of tone just of, in order to push more the amp and it works pretty nicely I have to say. Then I've used uh, the compressor, a classic compressor, the 1176 Universal Audio Compressor with the guitar shine uh, settings, just uh, touching a little bit the attack and the release. Also the solo guitar has been equalized, rolling off the frequency below 100 Hz and pushing a little bit at 4.5 kHz as I was explaining previously. Then I've also used the Ocean Way and the Roland RE201 for the delay. For the clean Telecaster that has this sound, Here I've used still the Dirty Shirley with the following setting. So basically removing the bass frequency, increasing a little bit the middle and increasing also the treble with the volume set to around 11 and increasing the master volume. Here I've used a 4x12 
cabinet with a combination of uh, dynamic and ribbon microphone. I actually really like this clean sound. Then I've also used a Roland Brigade chorus, adding a little bit of it. As you can see, the settings are almost to zero, so I wanted just to add a little bit of uh, vibrato to the sound. I still use the equalization rolling off at 73. So as you may have noticed, uh, with all the guitars I have rolled off the low frequency because in this way I want to leave more space to the bass guitar and to the kick drum. And I also use an Ocean Wave plugin to put it properly in the space. Now let's go to the ES175 guitar. I basically not used any amp simulation plugin. I've just recorded the guitar with the TwinX HiZ input and then adding a Universal Audio 610B plugin and the Roland Dimension D with some equalization and with a lot of reverb and delay. Let's see the setting of the preamp. Here it is, so as you may have noticed, I've increased a little bit the gain and I have decreased the output just to obtain more harmonic and have a richer sound. Then the Dimension D is in the third position. This uh, gives me a more wider sound that I really like. As regard the equalization, I have roll off below 80 Hz. And as I was saying, I use a lot of delay with the following setting. These are the setting of the Roland RE201 in position 8 as you may notice here. And I have to say that I have also equalized the reverb because in the delay because I roll off before 63 and roll off the height higher than 6.5 kilohertz. Last thing I want to share is the amp I use for the bass guitar. I've used an Ampeg SVTR with the following settings using an 8 by 10 cabinet with the volume increased, the bass frequency increased. I use a little bit more complicated equalization because I wanted to fit it well with the drum. In order to do it I have equalized the drum and the bass basically with the opposite setting. So where for the kick drum I have cut at 351 Hz, in the bass guitar I have pushed the same frequency and so on and so forth. This still to make these two tracks fit well together. Another thing that I've used for the bus is a 1176 compressor with the following setting. And that's all. So final tough. Let me start from the pros. The TwinX provides a great integration with the other Apollo Rack interfaces. It's a plug and play integration, you just have to cascade the Apollo TwinX via Thunderbolt with another Apollo Rack interface and you are ready to go. It is, in my opinion, really a nice companion, mostly for the Apollo X16. In fact, it adds two unison preamps that the Apollo 16 does not have, added input where the Apollo X16 has only SPDIF, and headphone output and IZ input, and a nice remote controller for volume, speaker selection, and so on and so forth. The other pro I would like to mention is the latency. This is one of the most important selling points for me as regards the whole Apollo family of interfaces. Because, for instance, you are able to track with a nice reverb or a compressor with, believe me, zero latency. And this is really, really nice and fun. As regards sound quality, well, in my opinion, you can judge from the demo song at the beginning of the video. For me, it's absolutely fine. The converters of the TwinX are just a little step behind of the converters of the X16 that, from my research in internet, should have a 32-bit ESS9018 converter. In fact, it should be the only way to achieve such a high dynamic range. 133 dB are really a lot. Now let's talk a little bit about the cons. Well, in my opinion, there are really few drawbacks here, and I would rather talk about my wish list. 
I would like the Twin X to be Thunderbolt 3 powered, so with less cable on your desk, basically. We can power a 15-inch MacBook Pro via Thunderbolt. So I, I don't know actually why we need another power brick to power the Twin. Let me know in the comment below if you know the reason why. Another little drawback is that it must be the last unit in your Thunderbolt 3 chain as the Twin X only have a single Thunderbolt 3 port. This is for me pretty annoying because I would like to have the possibility to attach other Thunderbolt 3 devices to my Thunderbolt chain. It is a little bit pricey, so I would not say that it is an entry level audio interface with its 900 euro or dollars price tag and the cheaper version of the Twin X has only two shared DSP chips, with which you cannot use too many plugins. So, these are my final two cents. We have now reached the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed, and if you did, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. It would be of a great help. If you're interested in my music, please follow the link in the description below to a playlist of songs of mine. This is the end. I leave you now with my unboxing experience. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.